Toy reviews on YouTube are kind of a big deal. Like, surprisingly big. Look up toy review on YouTube and you get pages and pages of videos with thousands or even millions of views, reviewing everything from dogs to ponies to dinosaurs. Recently, we made a video about the great white shark genome in which I demonstrated the sequencing of DNA using megablocks. Lots of you commented about my use of the megablocks and well, YouTube took notice. The recommended videos featured next to our video were full of toy reviews for like a whole day. Gotta love the YouTube algorithm. So obviously I've decided that from now on, Nature League will be exclusively a toy review channel. Okay, not really. But the experience did make me think that making a video about children's toys would be really fun. I mean, toys are some of the first ways that kids interact with life on Earth and learn about species. The issue is that toys aren't always necessarily accurate or even within the realm of reality. So how do certain toys stack up when it comes to properly teaching about nature? To answer this question, I'm going to be reviewing children's toys that I have never seen before. Totally unscripted. This might get weird. All right, Britt, you ready for your first one? Yes, apparently reviewing toys was not interesting enough, so instead I have to, you know, guess and figure them out blindly first and then give some kind of a critique. Is this the plan? Yes. Oh, we got tail. Okay. Starting dor caudal fin, anal fin, dorsal fin, pectoral fins. Why is this one bent? <laughs> so we have a ver uh, yeah, vertical. All right, we're dealing with a fish. We have a fish. Congratulations. It's a fish. It's a sharky. Oh, well, it's not a hammerhead. Ooh, it could be a thresher. Hang on. What's the ratio? What's a blind ratio of this fin to body length? We have this. So that means the ratio is almost half. Is this a thresher shark? What happened to its mouth? <laughs> they missed, they missed so hard. <laughs> this can't possibly be useful for hydrodynamics while swimming. This almost threw me off and I was like, oh, maybe it's a whale, but then vertical fin, what are you gonna do? This is a pretty classic shark. Definitely not a thresher shark. The interesting thing about, about shark and about species with toys is that it's like, generic this thing, which almost has like combinations of all the different kinds of species of that taxon and like pieces from each, but it actually isn't itself anything specific. This is like shark with a lowercase s and like an asterisk at the end. Oh God, it's only got three gills. Well, that's misleading. Nope, four, four, missed it. Shoddy construction. Four gills, that seems fair. Um, and pretty realistic, except for the mouth. Yeah, the mouth is the mouth is the most misleading thing, but pretty realistic. But if you had a very small child that had this as an example of here is a shark, it could totally be worse. I say that as someone who owns a lot of things that kind of look like sharks. I do want to send it to Fin Rehab though. Next toy. Oh no, that's box. Docks and table. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Wings, legs, insect. One, two. Three pairs and antennae. Okay, so we have a winged, a flying insect. Probably something pretty common. I would guess like a bee. We've got, oh no, just a fly, a classic fly. Though they definitely, they, they skimped on, on paint. They were just like, we only have black. This is all we have. There's no delineation of eyes, but that's all right. Insect, that's a cool word that we've broken down before. Just meaning like sect, meaning like dissected to cut up. So they did a really nice job of like, showing that the insect here has segmented appendages because that's such a big thing like arthropods, they're joints, they are little segments. This is again, generic fly, lowercase f with an asterisk, but it's certainly not to scale of life. <laughs> this is probably the most misleading thing <laughs> because this is almost as large as that shark I just had. And there is definitely a problem with scale <laughs> when you have a small child that has no idea um, what something is, you're like, my God, we're all going to die. Those sharks don't seem that scary at all. <laughs> scaling up seems almost more fantastical than scaling down. So like having a shark that's small, it's like, well, we couldn't actually bring a shark into the house, so here's a small version. Where scaling up is like, you had no reason to scale up. Like you could have just had a fly toy, right? <laughs> like, I don't know, is that strange? I guess, oh, there choking hazard. Yeah. I clearly do not have children. <laughs> So that's why we scale up. All right, well, we've all learned something here today. This is a good fly. <laughs> it's generic, but it's good. Next toy. Okay, there's a lot of detail. It is on a pedestal. Oh, it spins. Does it spin? Does it light up? I feel like it has a power button. There's some mechanic. I don't even care about the species anymore. I just want to know what it does. 
Like, I'm a child. All right, fine, I'll look at the actual thing. Okay, we have four legs, we have quadruped, a floofy texture tail. Reminds me of like a, a white-tailed deer. I can't tell if it's hooved or not. Ungulates, if you will. I think it's a beard, so maybe it's a goat. And we got horns. Here's a goat confirmation. We've got four legs, a little floofy tail, a beard, horns, and ears. I don't really know why it's on a pedestal, but perhaps it did something that merited a celebration. Hey, goat. Yeah, no, this absolutely should do something. Did you guys not put batteries in here? <laughs> Why does it take that much pressure to make a noise? It's a screamer, it's a screamer for sure. Here's my big issue is why did this goat feel like it needed to be on a tree trunk that was cut to then be pressed to scream. Cats are notorious for like, oh, that sheet of paper in an otherwise like empty room, I'm gonna be on that because it's a millimeter taller and I like being up high. But like goats, I don't know that this is necessarily advantageous for any form of survival to be like, I'm a prey species and here I am on a pedestal. <laughs> and also, <laughs> this is a dead goat. I mean, structurally, that's like definitely a goat. I'm just very confused as to what its plan is concerning screaming on this tree trunk. <laughs> Next toy. That's a dinosaur. This feels like a triceratops. This feels like a frill. Although I guess I should count the horns. Well, we got three. Oh, and it has a nice little substrate. Yeah, I think we're, we're dealing, this is a nice little trike here. Now the question is from which like potentially kids movie or are we, you know, here have a realistic from a museum? I don't know. Let's see. That is garish and very blue. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. Did someone's dog eat this? This is one of, this is someone's house toy. <laughs> Some interesting things going on here. Color, misleading to the best of our knowledge. I don't know that blues come out as an established triceratops color so far, but hey, paleontology is an evolving field. There are these raised bumps along the sides, and I don't know what those are. Perhaps this is a pathology, like disease pathology triceratops. This is a very sick triceratops. This is the one in Jurassic Park that Alan Grant's like put in his ear to. He's like, <sighs> because it's sick, right? It was sick with trichpox, tri triceropox. Dinosaur toys, that's the really fascinating thing about like representing the things we keep learning. With paleontology, it's constantly changing because we don't just have these species around to look at and to model on. So the toys get updated more slowly than the research does. You know, this idea of will we see feathers, what kind of body positioning would there be when we find out how, even the sounds that something makes. Um, the idea that, you know, T-Rex doesn't roar anymore, it's a completely different vocalization created. So I feel like this is maybe from a while ago, as far as when this toy was created. But you know, the amazing thing is despite it being like bright blue and covered in some form of pox, it's still clearly a triceratops. And dinosaurs, like toys are as close as we kind of get. I don't think it's very realistic, but I really like it. Also get vaccinated, triceratops. Next toy. Okay, uh, f some form of a, 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 oh God, oh, it rotates. Oh, oh no, nothing is real anymore. <laughs> Why does this spin? Okay, I can go ahead and say that for sure, nothing should, should spin this way. So a few misleading things. I think I feel boots. <laughs> this seems to be, a a species that wears boots. There's like knee joints, so I think it's bipedal, so standing on two legs. Takes me up to gluteals, okay, some form of a skirt. That shouldn't be there. Maybe that's an arm, two arms. Snout, okay, there's a mouth and a fin. You know, it's in boots, like, so pirate. It's a pirate, it's a pirate duck. I don't, it's got a frill, I don't know, I don't know. What is this? <laughs> you know, Here's the thing, this is a problem <laughs> for a lot of reasons. The ratio of where this fin is to the head would be like a shark having a fin here, which is a problem. Ooh, I do like the piercings, that's fair. If you're gonna be a pirate shark, like not really ears to pierce, so I do like this take. The whole bipedal thing um, is an issue, as are the arms for the idea of sharks. So definitely we're dealing with some mutant form. Does he attack? people with a, with fish what is what is hap my what's happening the weaponry is almost bothering me more than this shark with arms and legs do you know what that pirate shark would call himself if he could talk hammerhead shark nope 
he's just he's just a pirate shark. He's not a hammerhead. He's also not a shark, Maya. We are suspending disbelief clearly in several different arenas here. <laughs> it bothers me. I am actually really just bothered by this weaponry. Can we get a close up of this weaponry? What is the plan? What is the actual plan? He's fighting in the war. But like using fossils of his ancestors because clearly how large this shark tooth is, is nothing related here. We're talking like Megalodon. So like what, you dug a fossil up, which is gonna be fragile, by the way, on account of it being a fossil, and you're gonna use a fossil to hit. It's like if you grabbed petrified wood to go into battle with. It's a terrible idea. And I do not understand fundamentally what this is. What is this? Thanks, I hate it. Next toy. Oh my gosh, those are Shrek ears. Shrek Dale, Shrek Dale. Yay, yay. Let me first say, the fact that this even exists in real life is almost too much for me to really deal with. <laughs> Cause it's a thing from the basement of a place I go to and then a thing that hangs on the rear view mirror of my car and now they exist in real life as things that raise money for wonderful charities. And that is wild and beautiful. Believability, like, Clearly we have some major problems as far as these legs holding up this large of a head. But to have the, um, the larger like head and face and the eyes does this nice little anthropomorphic or like cute baby kind of version, which makes this super adorable. Because I mean, look, if this were real dimensions, if a sheep's head ended halfway down its back, we'd be in trouble. There'd be some structural problems. <laughs> But as it is, it's freaking adorable. So what are we even supposed to do? Definitely let us know in the comments if you're team Dale, team Glenn, or team, I don't know what's happening, but I should maybe figure it out and um, join for Project for Awesome in 2019. <laughs> Next toy. Okay, these appear to be some form of webbed feet with arms that are also webbed, but webbed differently. Oh no, this is Kermit. I think they're Kermit the Frog here. It is a Kermit, yeah. <laughs> You know why? Because real frogs don't have collars. That's why. It's an immediate tell. <laughs> Kermit is like a great example of this anthropomorphized, uh, like hybrid version of a species. So a frog is not going to anatomically sit, right? It's also not going to have, well, thumbs. Um, <laughs> frogs will not have thumbs. I was about to say something very broad, but then I just looked down and saw he definitely has four fingers and thumbs, so that's a problem. <laughs> thumbs up and all, but definitely uh, severely misleading. It's this combo of here is a human body, so this idea of like I stand on two legs and my head is upright and I'm looking, you know, and I have arms and I have freaking thumbs, and yet we have the feel of it's still a frog. So like no ears and of course the green and the eyes like top of head, kind of a beautiful halfway, which I think is why we relate to like something like a Muppet or, or types of puppets because they are this like lovely little hybrid form. We can see pieces of ourselves, but it's still clearly not totally human, um, makes it more relatable. You don't learn much about the species themselves, but that mixture of seeing it with a human makes it something Entirely unique. Do frogs have uvulas? He has a very, very pronounced uvula. <laughs> Next story. All right. Well, well, I see. Um, why? Why is it fuzzy on the underneath and not? Uh, um, oh, oh. <laughs> What's his name? Rex is the T Rex. What's the dog's name? Slinky's name. Slinky dog. Dog. Spot. It's the slinky dog from Toy Story, and I can't for the life of me remember its name. <laughs> this is ominous. Maya, what have you done? You're supposed to drag the slinky toy. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about any of those mechanics. I, you know what? <laughs> I don't like it. It's unwieldy and noisy. Dachshunds, they don't sound like this. If they do, you should probably see a vet. This is like one of those examples of here's a character. So we've we've suspended some disbelief and we're seeing a hybrid of a toy that we know, a slinky, represented within a body shape that we know, which is the dachshund, artificially selected for us. So humans have bred that trait to have those the long body. Yeah, we're missing a couple dog things. I do like that the dog only has um, three toes on the back, <laughs> four in the front, no features in the back, no knees, which you know is not good. 
this really is the most concerning thing about this toy because I don't understand what you're so... Do you hang it? Ah, no, 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 don't hang it, don't. Shh, that's so loud, I hate it, it's so loud. Dachshunds bred, their, their tails are able to be held up like to be hunting dogs, to go into burrows and get things out for hunters. Like uh, on a dachshund, just the trait um, of those tails are... You know what, This at a certain point, the ASPCA is gonna get called over this video, like getting them out. But if you're a slinky, not as effective for hunting and retrieving. That was totally delightful and interesting and made me think about toys in a way that I have only kind of done tangentially. Like I've seen toys and thought that is a disaster. And I also grew up and as a kid had toys that I love that were equally, you know, zoology disasters. But the thing is, it's neat to see the way that the things we grow up with are inspired by life on earth, uh, include things that we see outside and then have them inside. And it's just another way that life inspires uh, us humans as we grow. Thanks for joining us on this special toy review episode of Nature League. If you'd like to keep going on Life on Earth adventures with us each week, you can go to youtube.com slash nature league, subscribe and share. Heads up, we are filming a question and answer episode of Nature League coming out soon, and that means that I need your questions about life on Earth or anything we do here at Nature League. So instead of a from A to B, I'd like it to be a from U to B. You can even act like Adrian and see something weird on the internet and ask me all about it. I. So you're replacing me. It, there can be more than one no. person asking no, it's cool. questions at any I get it. Really? Nope, it's just fine. That's cool. I didn't even like this gig. This. He's always been sensitive. The exit's this way. So if you have a question, make sure to leave it in the comments below. Or if you see a meme or something else online, you can definitely tweet it at us at Nature League. Adrian might not be looking forward to it, but I am.